33 years ago, Grinnell College gave me a chance as an adjunct to teach a course called Black Sociology. That was a subfield of sociology. And by the way, the co-founder of that field was a 1959 black Grinnell College alum named Dr. Andrew Billingsley. I want you to raise your hand if you knew that. The rest of you have homework. <laughs> I was finishing my PhD at the University of Iowa, and I was surprised that Grinnell wanted someone with my radical background. I was an ex-Black Panther in Detroit. Raise your hand if you knew who they were. <laughs> no homework required. <laughs> I was called an opportunity hire. I was here, and they wanted to diversify their faculty. And I want you to know that I am the first black African-American female tenured in the history of the institution in 1991. Thank you. I wanted you to know that I did want that applause. I wrote that down, make sure they give you that applause. <laughs> But second, this teaching opportunity for me came at the brink of a gender revolution that was taking place at the college. When I joined the faculty, there were 17 women faculty, two lesbians who were, in which it was not safe for them to be out, and one other faculty of color. Today, more than half of the faculty are women. Please, let's applause about that. Thank you. Now, the third thing I can tell you without hesitation was that Grinnell was far more than I bargained for. Why? Because it already had the historical mission to train young people to think independently and progressively. And I had grown up in that Angela Davis era. Raise your hand if you know who that was. Oh, very good. Very good. You see, in that era, activists were also scholars who preached and practiced community-based organizing tactics. And this was my academic wheelhouse. I wanted to teach students who wanted to be change agents. My challenges in Grinnell weren't about the cornfields, and it wasn't about the struggles of seeing things through the black and white paradigm. It was really about how to change and intersect my own academic and political training about race, class, and gender, and really all the isms to the poverty that I saw in rural Iowa, or what we call today studies of privilege. This, sh this shifted my teaching, and I challenge my students that regardless of where they came from, what their privileges were, what identities they performed, that there was one key tactic to survival in this world, and that was to get engaged. Now, I want to tell you, some students found my offerings very jarring. I still meet them when they say, when I was at Grinnell, I didn't take your class. <laughs> but other students were extremely excited to become the subjects of their own education. My classrooms, like those of many of my colleagues, became active places. Why I facilitated safe spaces, I want you to know that my students created brave spaces in which they took on conversations of power, prestige, privilege, oppression, and wealth disparities, which changed not only their interpersonal selves, but it changed the campus life, and it created that new pathway for what we call social justice. So ask me, what did they do? Come on. In 1996, in the Grinnell in London program, students were brave enough to invite and debate the English National, National Party, those representatives who espoused anti-Semitic, racist, and white supremacist views. Ask me what they did. In 2013, my American Studies course studied the life and the times of J.B. Grinnell, and they took the complexities of his biography to Iowa Public Radio Talk of Iowa. Ask me what they did. In 2014, in my social movements course, these students occupied the test. 
and they collectively created an alternative exam because they said to me, Dr. Scott, you cannot possibly measure what we learned. Give them an applause, please. Because they were amazing, amazing. Ask me what they did. In my American Studies course on the famous American journeys, they reenacted the enslaved people's journey on the Underground Railroad. They walked at midnight seven miles from Rock Creek Park, you know where that is? Yeah. All the way to Grinnell while the dogs were burning and their imaginations were on fire because they were thinking about freedom. Ask me what they did. And in that same class, they talked about, they talked to the survivors of the Sandy Hook massacres, the fathers, the medical staff, the ministers, the teachers who shared their unexpected journeys brought on by gun violence, mental illness, and debates that they would later have about the Second Amendment. Folks, in their active classrooms, they learned that their education had power. For a few minutes, I want to challenge you to remember what happened in your classrooms at Grinnell College. Are you willing to do this? You don't even know what I'm going to ask. My goodness. But here's what I want you to do. Turn to the person next to you and say, tell them, what was the course? Who was the professor? What was the learning moment that changed you? Can you do that? Go. I'm timing you. Go. <laughs> supposed to be four minutes and I want to get there. Thank you for taking a moment to do that, to go down that memory lane and to rekindle that teaching moment because I think that's what the Grinnell education is about. I want you to know that it has been an honor and a privilege to teach under the banner of the mission of Grinnell College. It has enriched my life professionally and absolutely personally. To see classrooms become a site of not only safe places, but brave spaces where young people can practice democratic ideals and transform themselves. They are really the ones who become pioneers as well as learners. Please take this campaign seriously because you will make a difference in the alums that follow you. Thank you.